everybody, I hope you're doing marvellously well. I've got my headphones on because I am about to do a call with my good friend Mike Arango over at Sweetwater and today we're going to talk about hardware. So in the studio build we've put our panels up, we've acoustically treated the room, it sounds freaking awesome, we've tried out tons of different speakers, we're rotating them, it's been a lot of fun. But what we haven't talked about is hardware. I still absolutely love hardware. When it comes down to plugins and stuff, what's the great thing is, is that we can take any sound now and manipulate it in all kinds of different ways. Mangle it, you know, you name it. Dynamic EQ it, compress it, multiband it, reverb it, delay, delay, delay chorus it, flange it, all of that wonderful stuff. But there's still something to be said for getting the sound on the way in as best as you possibly can. And I think it's pretty much 99% of the time people are mixing in a box now. Let's be honest, as much as I love mixing hybrid through the SSL, and a few of my friends still do that, there's so many professional mixers now that are mixing entirely in the box. So what are we left with in the hardware front? Well, once again, it's about getting good front end. So I'm going to call Mike and we're going to talk about different pieces of hardware, different mic pre's, compressors and EQ's. But I think one of the directions we're going to go in, especially for somebody, you know, has a studio set up something like this, is 500 series stuff. The advice I give all the time when I'm contacted about hardware, especially for home studio people, is get a 500 series unit. Because you get that, whether it be a 6 or an 8 or a 12 slot or whatever it might be, you can put in all different flavors of pre's and compressors and EQ's and when you get bored with something or you want to upgrade it because you came in at a lower price point you just flip it out it's a wonderful wonderful way of working but there are some things to be aware of when it comes to using 500 series racks you need to probably spend a little bit more than the lowest point because the the power supplies in them are very very important so let's talk to mike and get a little bit more detail on all of that and look at all of the different pre's and compressors etc that are, are available and uh well get stuck in mike how the devil are you hey good morning warren how are you doing i'm good i'm good we're gonna we're gonna do hardware and as i was saying to the good good folks watching um and I'm sure you feel similarly about it, especially for home studio units, 500 series racks are a godsend because you can populate them with different companies' equipment, and when you want to upgrade, etc., you can just swap them out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you, you buy the power supply one time then, you know, you know the, then the chassis one time, so you're not paying for that with every piece of equipment. They're kind of like the, you know, the baseball, the trading cards of the, the audio world, you know, and you can pop them in and out for different sessions, trade them, get rid of them, um, buy new ones, all, all that kind of stuff. And that's a, a, a ton of fun. So you get a rack with a good power supply off for, from the get-go. You can buy a six-space, eight-space, ten-space rack. And possibly the only bad thing about it is that it's, it's, it's addictive. It's hard to look at the uh, at all the empty <laughs> spaces there that need to be filled. But uh, <laughs> there's, there's so many options, so many cool options. And then you're not paying for the, you know, once you've made that in, initial investment, you're not paying for the, the power supply each time. And they do tends to be a little less expensive right. um, overall. And there's, there's a difference in the, um, the, the, the power rails in, in some cases. There may be a difference right. in, in headroom between the 500 series and the rack mount version of a given piece of equipment. Um, that's not generally a huge concern overall, but it, it's worth being aware of. Um, you know, the a, API's consoles for years have been based around that, that 500 of course, series technology, you know, yeah. so I mean, they're and those are amazing sounding boards. Absolutely. Yes. Some of the best, greatest records in the world were made on them. So, um, you know, I've got personal loves when it comes to Mike Prees. Um, I also want to stretch my wings and try some other things as well. Um, obviously, API, go back to API, uh, 312s, etc. are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I have a whole bunch of those already. I have the BAE ones, which I absolutely love. I also have some BAE um, uh, 1073s. What are they called? They're called the 73? The BAE 1073 MPL, and then they also do a version that actually has EQ built in. Right. Um, and that takes up three slots, so you know you want right. to... There's that trade-off, but in my opinion, that EQ is a big part of the, the sound of a 1073. Agreed. They sound amazing. They have the harmonic distortion that they add alone. Um, is, is amazing, but yeah, the, you think of the the weight of a kick drum. I mean, the, the, there's the, those inductor based EQs are just magic. But yeah, the cool thing about the 500 series chassis is that all these classic 
flavors are available. You know, you have 1073 pre's, you know, Neve type stuff. You have the API stuff you mentioned. You have SSL EQs. You have yeah, yeah. all these classic flavors. And then you have a billion other things that are available at all various price points and all different kind of sonic flavors. I, I, yeah, I, I, I have too many. I have two 10 space racks full of them plus the console. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm deep into it. Yeah, there's, so there's some great stuff here. I I really really like the uh, t uh, the 1073 MPL. So we have I'm looking at here the MPL, and then of course there's mm -hmm. the 73 EQs which you can get separately. Um, yep. Obviously, I have a lot of their um, 19 inch rack mount stuff. The 1028 is my main vocal pre. Uh, it's yeah. And I use it on acoustic guitars, etc. as well. Uh, it's absolutely superb. The 1073 DMP, which is that desktop unit, is pretty phenomenal. I lent it to a friend of mine a couple of years ago. I'm looking at it thinking, I need to get that back. Um, <laughs> but I like it. You can kind of just walk in, put it down. Um, I know a lot of bass players that love it. They just plug straight into the front, then go straight in. It's their all-in-one DI and mic pre, just boom, ready to go because it's got an in, out, and a through on it, which is really useful on the front. Um, but I think for us, um, I'm not sure, because I've got, I've got so many other flavors, I might just go for an EQ, personally, in this instance, just get a 1073 EQ, and then experiment more on the mic pre's. Um, now, I was talking to the Warm guys the other day, and they have like an entry-level pre. What's that one called? Yeah, they do their WA-12. And there's a desktop version and also a 500 series version of it. It's a really cool little uh, little preamp, and they, they certainly can grab one and toss into the 500 series rack if you want to try that out. Uh, definitely. I mean, it's it's listed here at $299. So I think I think we should definitely get one of those because it's a real-world mic pre. Um, I think that makes perfect, perfect sense. For a lot of people, they're going to be in these kind of situations if they want to get external pre's. This is probably going to be a first step into buying a pre. You know, thinking... You know, do I need a pre outside of my interface? This is going to be the right kind of price point. So we'll definitely get one of those. That'd be phenomenal. And that thing does add a little color, too. You know, that's the thing. The, the preamps built into interfaces at this point, I mean, there, there's definitely tiers of, of pre's out there, you know, possibly better sounding ones you can upgrade to. But the pre's in interfaces are really good, serviceable pre's at this oh, point. Oh, gorgeous, so yeah. My, my thought is that when we're going to an outboard piece of equipment, Regardless of the cost, we might be looking for something with a little different yeah. personality. You know, something that will add some some color like, like this thing certainly can. Yep, definitely. Well, I'm excited to try it out. And it's orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to stand out in the, in the rack behind me here. Okay. Um, all right. So what about some other suggestions for pre's? Maybe shaking, uh, shaking the trees a bit, getting me out of my usual suspects. If we're looking... At that kind of price point, have you checked out the Cranborn stuff? It's a Love similar Cranborn. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they they make these preamps that are um, they're they're really pretty great sounding, especially at the price point that they hit. Um, and then they're the same kind of thing. You have this. I, I forget what they call the the actual knob, but it's a color knob basically to inject yeah. some of that harmonic saturation. And you can have as much or as a little bit of it as you'd like. Yeah, the Cam the Camden. Um... 500 series, yeah, at 349. Again, another really good price. So maybe we should get one of those so we have uh, another affordable mic pre that we can shoot out against other stuff. Yeah, I think that's a good bet. I was actually pretty impressed with them when they were here. Oh, they call it Mojo. That's what the knob's called, and then the thump or cream settings. And yeah, that does add some, some color, different types of saturation, um, different from but not totally dissimilar from at least the idea of like the um, Rupert New Designs stuff where they have the two different colors of silk that emphasize more of a low mid kind of harmonic distortion and saturation versus a high mid kind of thing. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. Um, I think we should get a pair of those um, because we're going to need something for, you know, because we're, we're talking about getting five mic pre's um, a couple of EQs and one compressor. Um, it's when I'm recording a drum kit, for instance, I may only use compression on a kick in, a snare top, 
never on overheads. Maybe maybe if somebody's got a you know a Fairchild sitting in their studio, I'll, I'll tap it you know with the overheads. But I tend to yeah. wait. Or a Manly, a very Mew um, is really nice on overheads. Um, but generally speaking, I could get away with one to two compressors maximum. So if we had five mic pre's in an eight eight um, space unit. Um, we could have, as long as we have one pair, then we can use them for matched. That would be good for overheads and also be good, obviously, for pianos and anything else that I want to do stereo. And I think, I feel like the Cranbourne, um, the Camden, a pair of those would be really tasty. While we're on the Cranbourne conversation, there is, of course, their own unit, which has a, everything in it, an interface and you name it, all built in. Yeah, they make a, a few different. 500 series racks. They make their standard one. They make one that has the an interface built in, I believe, and then they also make one, one with the conversion built in to feed eight ad out to expand an interface. Yeah, and then they have like the one that has eight inputs that can be expanded up to 18. So it's right. a really good way for people to expand their eight channel interfaces when they want to end up recording drums, full bands, that kind of stuff. Right. As they build the preamp collection. So I see an eight slot 500 series chassis with the audio interface, and I see the 500 chassis with 8 at I.O. So basically that would daisy chain from the other. So you could you would buy the 500 R8, and then would you get the Cranbourne 500 8 at 8 slot 500 series chassis, which would daisy chain off of the other one. So you could get 16 inputs. Yeah, so just like any other interface, um, like a you know, Personas Focus, right? Whatever interface that has eight inputs, you can do the same thing with this. You can do that R8 that'll give you eight slots plus the the interface functionality, and then you can expand that via the eight out inputs. So you can have 16 inputs with whatever pre's you choose in that case. Right. Right. Um, that's great. Absolutely fantastic. Well. You know, let's let, let's let's think about that because obviously that's another interface and it's got all the inputs. The question is, um, you know, mic pre-wise, we've got two of the Camdens, we've got one of the the Warm WA12. What would we go for another pair while we're still on mic pre's? Well, it depends on where we want to end up price-wise. You know, you have the um, the the Neves that we talked about, the API type pre's. Yep. Um, I, I love API mic pre's for the for the, well for, for a lot of stuff, but yep. for close mic drums, for the close mics are uh, amazing. So that style, although the warm kind of might get you there as well, depending on where we went the price wise on it. Well, I think what I what I want to do is be able to um, do this at an affordable level because I've got the other room in there where I have everything. You know, I've got Ampex tube mic pre's, crown mic pre's from, from, you know, old tape machines. I've got Telefunkens, I've got Neves, I've got APIs, I've got BAE, I've got Kadak, you know, you name it, I've got it sitting in that other room. Um, what I don't have in this room is a kind of a more affordable kind of approach that we can showcase and, you know, make it a bit more realistic for people that are, you know, building home studios like this. So what else do you think, even if it's just a little bit more, because we started off at 299 now we've gone to 349 is there anything else in that price range you would recommend? Well, yeah, so the, um, if, if we're sticking to that price point, you know, Golden Age makes a 500 series pre at this point, which is a 73 inspired pre. It's not going to sound exactly like a, like a 73, but might give you some of that right vibe there that's what they're what they're going after um and then i mean i think at that point you start to jump up to things like ssl makes their vhd pre ooh, and actually all, all the ssl stuff yeah just recently came down in, in price yeah and so it makes it real uh, a lot more attainable yeah yeah i agree no I, I actually when i was um at aes i was talking to ssl about some of that stuff yeah um yeah i mean what, oh my god is that six channel 500 series channel strip Mic nine preamp for two ninety nine. The six channel is a, a channel from their their six that board yeah, that they came yeah. out with the six channel. Uh, so yeah, all this stuff came down in cost significantly, and then right now they have it discounted further. So yeah, that wow. six channel is right out of that that board. So you have this real you know the, the basic EQ, um, basic compression, that kind of stuff. You're, you're not going to have a ton of control over it, like the attack and release and that kind of stuff. If you're trying to get artistic with the compression, but yeah, I mean it, it's perfectly serviceable and and a good pre and a really why don't cool we why don't we do this then let's get a couple of those a pair of those as well because then i've got compression built in with the mic pre they're a stereo pair 
I mean, that's at that price point. Why not? You know what I mean? It's um, it's interesting because it's a great conversation because SSL we think of as the mixing console. Um, obviously, like the ultimate mixing console, so many of the greatest albums of all time were mixed on 4000s from like the late 70s all the way through till, frankly, now. Um, but when you talk to Hugh Padgham and Steve Lillywhite, you find out that they actually not only did they mix on them, they also recorded through those mic brews. So you're, you're talking about some of the greatest albums ever made, like Peter Gabriel solo records that were recorded and mixed on SSL consoles. And you're right, they don't have the, the reputation for the mic pre's until you dig into it, like, like you had just said there. But I think especially when they added that VHD circuit, whenever that was introduced, that was probably a, a decade or more ago when they introduced that into some of their rack mount stuff. But that's, you know, that's what we're looking for in many cases, is the option to add well, I'm, color. And, I'm torn. I'm torn because I, I I, I, I'm sort of contradicting myself because it's nice to have the compression built in, but maybe we just get the one because I really want the VHD. I'd really like to get one of those VHDs and then one of the the six with the compression built in. Because then what I could do is I could use that maybe on kick or snare top and then use one of the other mic pre's with the compressor. Because I, I think two compressors come to think it would make sense because like I said, I typically only compress a kick in and a snare top. So that six could be one of those two, um, two um, needs. Um, so let's do this. Let's do a VHD and a six, five hundred series channel strip. It's, it's so hard to not buy them in pairs, isn't it? I, I know. I know. <laughs> the I know. option of having stereo and two always come home with me. You always seem to. I know. Um, but yeah, this, this is this is possibly. I mean, honestly, possibly from working with you for for so many years. I mean, very similarly, I'm generally going to use compression on my my kick in just to tap it and control yeah. it a little bit. And I think that that would be uh, that six channel actually really could work well for that. I think so too. And yeah. then, and and also, you know, w this is creeping that budget up a, a little bit. But I I, I want to mention this because it's a steal for what it is. But that Rupert Neve Designs 511. So the, yeah, the Rupert Neve Designs 511 500 series mic pre. Yeah, those those are absolutely amazing. Um, so all right, well we're sort of talking ourselves in circles. So we'll do we'll do the six with the mic pre compressor, built in one, and that'll be my kick in. Um, and then we'll do the 511 and that that's a beautiful sounding mic pre that could be um, Kind of that could be the vocal mic pre the kind of high-end one with the silk on it We could use that for vocals. We could use that for acoustic guitars uh, Mono pianos, you know anything mandolin violin, you know anything sort of a solo featured instrument whether it be vocal or something So yeah, let's do that. That will be our one premium mic pre in the package all right, let's talk about EQ and compression. I think we already pretty much decided on the, the BAE 1073 EQ. The question is, do I want a pair of identical EQs or do I want two different ones? Because if I'm going to get two different ones, of course, I'm probably going to want an API style, you know, um, EQ, you know, it's, and then probably for me, it would be a 560, but they're not cheap. They're not cheap. 945, I'm looking at one here for, uh, for an, a 560. That's a great EQ, though. Absolutely superb. The 560, the, the, the 550A, of course. I mean, I have those in my console, and the cool thing is, yeah, you can just pop them into a 500 series chassis that may be starting to get up to the, uh, out of the, the price point that we were looking at. But similarly, I mean, the, the 500 series stuff, from from SSL again, those those 611 EQs and and dynamics. I mean, it, it's a it's a certain type of compression. It can be can be aggressive, you know. But their their 611 dynamics and EQ have all dropped in price recently as well. Um, I I have a rack of those and and just absolutely love them. That's pretty tasty. You have a rack of the of the 611s. I have them in the in in one of my 500 series chassis. I think I have six of them. And look at you, yeah, both for tracking Go and Mike. mixing. I mean, those things are outstanding. I mean, I love them. I mean, I know you do too. You got a whole, you, have, you have a whole console full. I of have them. 40 channels of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I say I say let's get one of these. Go Warren. Yeah, let's get one of these. So let's get one of these. So we're, we're not going to have a pair of identical EQs. So that might be. Uh, that might be a little interesting on choice, but I think I'm not going to EQ the overheads anyway. We're only having five mics on a drum kit, so it's going to be kick in, 
overheads, snare top, hi hat, and it, you know that's it. That's the drum sound. There's no, there's going to be no tom mics on it anyway. So I'll leave the EQ um, to bring out the toms in in the mix stage. Um, so the EQ I'm going to use on this is going to be specifically for kick and snare, and I think there's nothing better than SSL for getting digging out um, ugly low mids and a kick drum so I'll probably end up using this on the kick anyway on the way in and then a classic um, 1073 is amazing on a snare top so so those broad strokes yeah, yeah, broad API strokes. and and uh, Neve and everything yeah but there's there's nothing quite like an SSL EQ for really carving stuff up yeah I think it'll be great I think it'll be absolutely fantastic for for the kick there you go I mean we're only left with one other decision to make. We've already got the compressor built into the SSL Mic Pre, the 6 Series 1, which has the compression built in. So we just need to get choose compression. Um, so, Mike, obviously the two compressors I use day in and day out are a DBX160VU and, of course, the classic Yuri um, 1176. So what do we have in the affordability of an 1176? Because to me that's like snare drum, snare top, vocals electric guitars. I mean, it's the most versatile compressor on the market for me. Yeah, and there are, uh, there are a handful of rack mount units that are all FET compressors, 1176, kind of copies or influenced by that would be uh, affordable that you could, could look at. I don't know if there's anybody that's making just a straight 1176 500 series module, but there are a few FET style compressors like on that Fredenstein makes their artistic compressor, which is in that $300 price point, but it's a FET style compressor. Um, West Audio makes one as well. That Mimas is a, is a FET style compressor, but it's going to be taking the budget up quite a bit again. So how, the Fred and Steen I'm looking at here is only 269. That's, that's, that's talking the right price point for me. If we're really showcasing affordable 500 series hardware, um, the, I do like the fact it's got a side chain on it, 150, 300. That's very tasty. Um, that's really nice, really, really nice for bass guitar tracking and everything. Um, yeah, it's got all the same points from two, uh, two to one to 20 to one as in Lem 76. Oh, so it doesn't have a variable attack time. So it has a, re it has a release time, but not a variable attack time. I think you have the switch over there for uh, okay. 25 and... Uh, okay. so you, it's, it's not completely variable, but it's switchable. Not completely variable, it's like... but it's switchable. Okay, that's interesting. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm down to try it. Yeah, I mean, it looks great to me. It's got a big fat transformer in it. We're going to like that. It looks like it's got, I don't know what that is. Is that like an op amp, that OPA2 looking at there? Yeah. Another cool thing is the parallel mix that they have on that. Oh, well. yeah, that's that great. Pop up on more and more equipment. That'd be a lot of fun to play with, too. Yeah, I love that idea, because then you can absolutely crush something and then just dial it back. So it's, it's cap parallel compression in a box. Yeah, you can just go take great on, on. That's really nice touch. I like that on acoustic guitar finger picking stuff. Um, highly suggest people try that. What you do is you crush the every single one of those, you know, aggressively crush while somebody's finger picking and then just dial it back and it just adds in an energy so you don't get those spiky kind of like notes that just jump out and others that disappear. It's a really, really tasteful way of adding energy to an acoustic guitar finger picking part. Yeah, this is really tasty. I, to be honest, at $269, this, this feels like one of the biggest bargains we've got. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Okay, so we've, we talked about the Cranbourne um, as, an, as a potential um, rack mount unit, as well as obviously the fact that they offer them with interfaces. What other 500 series uh, rack units do you like? Because I know from every discussion I've ever had with people who make this, is it's all about the power supply that you need. This is something people say do not cheap out on. You know, get the best quality one you can afford. So, what are, what what would you suggest? Yeah, exactly. The power supply is probably the most important thing when we're looking at a at a 500 series rack or chassis or lunchbox or, or what have you. Um, so it, I'm comfortable with, you know, the API, of course, they they redid their power supply several years ago. Excellent power supply there. Um, Purple Audio makes a good rack. Um, right, right. The Cranbourne ones seem to work fine. Rupert Neve Designs, I, I as we talked before, I mean, we both love the company and what they do in general. I have two of those 10-space racks. Oh, you do? Um, they, are, they are an internal switching power supply, so you have 
some that'll stick want to stick with the non-switching external power supply still like you get with like the api for example um but this is a like double shielded it's extremely well shielded i don't get any noise into the channels and into the modules that are in there and most importantly you know we're talking about the power supplies and the amount of current that it can deliver that's really what it comes down to to each slot and this i know how much it'll provide each slot but it, it shows me how much amperage i'm pulling for the entire chassis so if you really did load it down with um there are some amazing modules out there and shadow hills a few others that are power or current hungry um that a module without a good power supply wouldn't power those things sufficiently so this tells me how much right actual current i'm pulling so it's it looks like the purple's about 900 and the rupert designs is about a thousand so they're in a similar price range um yeah and then r d also does their their six space they do a, a lunchbox yeah style one um but you know like we were talking about before these i i, I started off with one rack i ended up with another i have plenty of people I've worked with that have started off with the two space or six space chassis and then they add a 10 and it's uh, more space is not a bad thing when you're already paying for the chassis and the power supply. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think a 10 makes sense, even though we're only looking at eight pieces at the moment, we'll have two slots available for, uh, for later discussions. <laughs> but you can fill them. <laughs> we will. <laughs> and, and the, the thing is, there's so much other cool stuff, right? I mean, so you have the pre's, you have the EQ's, you have, we didn't even mention earlier, but Paltech is making some really, really good units. Huge the fan, yeah. I've, format. I've got, I've got uh, two of those. Um, I love their 500 series. I use it on bass guitar and it is phenomenal. I would argue, and Steve, who owns them, will hate me for saying this, but I actually think... I think the low end on that 500 series is bigger and fatter and better suited for bass guitar than, than the, the, the rack mount one. Shh. I, I use it all the time for mixing. It's the eight. Just like with the rack mount one, he, he has the, the, the one with the tube makeup section versus the solid state I love, makeup section. I love the solid state one. They sound different. I love the solid state one. I know it's all tube, 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 but up for the low end, it's big and fat, but it's tight. Yeah, it's twelve hundred bucks, twelve fifty five for um, the five hundred series one. I mean, I don't know. It's a lot of people have come to work in my studio, and when we've been mixing, I've like I take the insert and I I turn it on and off, and they hear the difference that it's adding, and they're all blown away, and they go away and buy these. Yeah, this is one of the best EQs when it comes to yeah for mixing bass in particular. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I just take that hundred and I just boost it, and everybody's just like, "Whoa, my bass!" <laughs> yeah, and, and and other fun stuff. You know, if we even get out of the the pre and compression and EQ conversation, you know, um, yeah, not trying to talk too much about the R and D stuff, but they have that five forty two that tape emulator, which is actually yep. uh, you know working off of the current between a couple of. Uh, tape heads so it'll give you that, that yep. bump that you get at different ips per uh, on a tape machine nice um and it is really amazing sounding that also has a blend on it um i have i have and i love the um radial mix that ecstasy box e x t c right. they make a 500 series version of it that i have and that's another really good way for people to get you know for a few hundred bucks to get some extra use out of the 500 series chassis because this thing will correct the level and the impedance and unbalance the signal to send into guitar pedals. So I have a bunch of guitar pedals that I'll use interchangeably during tracking or mix. Um, and that's a, just a, a ton of fun and a good way for a few hundred bucks to make use of that extra empty slot in the 500 series chassis. And all of a sudden you have all these different pedals and you know, there's no end to the different things you can do with guitar pedals, obviously. Right. Absolutely. No, I, I love that. The the radials, uh, we actually have done that and brought in lots of pedals and stuff like that. I have a couple of those. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to have any shortage of uh, actual 500 series stuff sitting ready to go to fill those two slots anyway. But this has been fantastic. Um, I think the selection is really, really good. And we kept it really affordable and realistic for people that are building studios like we've built here in a bedroom. It's fantastic. Mike, thank you ever so much. Absolutely. Really cool to see stuff coming together. Thanks everybody for watching. So long, farewell, Avida Zayn, au revoir, adios. We'll talk to you all again soon. There'll be links down below to all the lovely stuff that we've been talking about. And uh, once again, thanks, Mike. Thank it's you, Warren. Really wonderful getting to talk to you.
Talk to you soon. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye.